I saw the story in a publication called the Daily Mail out of England. I was trying to figure out where I'd seen that. But the Daily Mail has the story, and it, it links to some of these websites that have been tracking the Clinton death list. And yes, uh, some sites say more than 50, other sites say nearly 80. People left uh, dead in the wake or through associations with the Clinton, uh, Clinton crime, uh, uh, what you call, I guess, cabal. 944, Bill with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I wanted to mention my friend, Dr. Christine Pickup, if I could, for just a moment. She's a doctor of audiology based at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert, which is now the last locally owned and operated hearing center in all of southern Idaho. And Dr. Pickup, I'd like to remind you that most people think of hearing as something that happens in your ears, but in reality, it's what's between your ears that counts. The brain is where sound becomes the details. Your brain has to work hard to make this happen, and when the sound signals are compromised from your ears, the brain has to work even harder to try and fill in gaps, and the extra effort can take its toll. Don't let your brain down, is what she'd like to tell you. Don't let it down. Take care of your hearing with the help of Mount Harrison Audiology, and you can call the office. Telephone number 208 312 0957. Another story that I wanted to mention, if I could, here in the last few minutes, we'll sort of jump around because there was a lot I wanted to get to, and we're not going to be able to touch on all of it. Mike Crapo had a sit down with the editorial board yesterday, Times News here in Twin Falls, and they had a discussion about refugee resettlement. Now, Crapo's opinion, and you may recall, uh, they cite Governor Butch Otter uh, after the Paris attacks uh, saying that uh, he wanted the program suspended. Uh, they don't cite that he, he he first mentioned that here on this radio show. Uh, I, the Spokesman Review up in Spokane, you know, that's a big newspaper. It gave me credit for that. <laughs> I was uh, I got a Google alert and I looked it up and there he says, and Governor Otter tells Bill Colley at KLIX in Twin Falls. Uh, I don't get the credit on the local level, I guess. Well, you know, they got that guy from Idaho Falls that writes the column for them, so I guess they don't need me. He's not he's not in direct competition, I suppose. But according to uh, to Mike Crapo, and they had a chance to speak with him about this, he says we need a better vetting process. Now I agree with that. In Syria, happens to be, you know, the, the people coming up in refugee camp they can claim anything, and they don't have a background because homes are destroyed, records are destroyed, and the like. That's a serious, serious concern. But one of our local Republican political leaders has commented, I posted this story to Facebook, has commented saying, look, we've been at war with these people since 2001. We've got to start taking a different look at all of this and not just saying, well, because, yeah, yeah all right, I know, not all Muslims are bad. The ones that I used to work with that became my friends, not bad at all, but they were all careerists. All they think about is how can I get ahead in my job and in my career. All right, but again, you know, even even in Canada, we saw a guy who was radicalized probably two years ago, three years ago, was not a problem. He went off the deep end last night, and Canadian police were forced to kill him after he started setting off bombs. I'm telling you right now, this is a serious threat. It's like having a disease introduced in the body that sleeps for many, many years that you don't even know is there, and then all of a sudden it just attacks you from within. Folks, we are playing with fire here. And the people who scream and yell and say, oh, Donald Trump wanted to bar all Muslims from coming to the U.S., how dare he? Oh, it's not the American way. Well, what is the American way? Is there a, is there a right to come to the United States for anybody who wants to? Of course not. We've had quotas and laws on the books throughout our history. Why do you think we have border checkpoints? for what good they are, I guess, on our borders any longer, especially on the southern end of the country. But why do you think we have those there? Some liberal tried to argue last week in some newspaper I was reading that, well, this is unconstitutional. Well, the Constitution, the amendments apply only to citizens of the United States. Now, Ruth Bader Meinhof on the Supreme Court may think otherwise. She'd like to use international law in all of her decisions and, and base things on that. But no. Our Constitution does not apply to somebody from Sudan or Syria or Iraq or Iran. It applies to citizens of the United States. By the way, your government's first responsibility is to its own citizens and not to people from around the world. So, number one, 
the Constitution is not protecting those people, just us. Number two, the Constitution says there is no right to come to this country just because you feel like it. And, and then the other part of this, too, is that we don't get a chance to talk about, and I heard this from somebody who was talking to me in the last few days, is the amount of money, your money, that is spent on these people, giving them the free ride when they come to this country. See, that's the thing is, when I was reading the comments in a, in a website the other day from ZZ Ruamswa, I think is how he pronounces it. Is it Ruazma or something like that? He's the guy who runs the local refugee center here in Twin Falls. And uh, he was talking about, you know, the, the, you know, about all of the, the mean-spirited, hate-filled people out there. But, dude, you got resettled here on my dime. Aren't any of you grateful for the things we did for you? You know, you've got a lot of people out here who are just sick and tired of being taken advantage of. And all of you folks who come here, whether you come here as illegal immigrants from Guatemala and, and Honduras and Mexico and feed off the system, somebody else is, is, is paying for that. And for refugees who come here and can't get their lives in order, and not all of them can, you ever remember a movie called Moscow on the Hudson about a Russian defector played by Robin Williams? And, uh, and he, he ends up struggling to get by in this country because not everyone who comes here has a smooth transition, and some of them never will. This is costing hardworking Americans. And if you didn't know it, the economy has never recovered after 2008, the meltdown. Really hasn't recovered since, oh, the meltdown in 1999 after the dot-com bubble burst. So why is there this insistent out, insistence that we have to keep pushing Americans into penury, I mean, to, to impoverish them, to force them onto food stamps so that we can also provide all of these things for all of these so-called newcomers. What is it, 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 it? You know, and I respect Mike Crapo. I like him a lot. He has one of the most stellar ratings in the U.S. Senate from the American Conservative U Union. His score is number two. There's 100 senators. He is tied for second. There are three guys ahead of him tied for first, Mike Lee being one of them from Utah. Tied for number two happened to be not only Mike Grapo, but Jim Risch. So I'm happy for that. I'm glad that they have these stellar voting records on most of these issues. But I'm telling you right now, the American people can't afford to keep giving away everything they have because they have less and less all the time. And when you stand there and you say, oh, well, you know, we have to be compassionate. Yeah, that's my decision. That's, he, Jesus did not tell the rich man who came to him and said, you know, Lord, you know, how, how can I, you know, serve you and, and you know, work with you? He didn't, he didn't say to him, well, you, you know, you've got to immediately give me everything you have so I can redistribute it. He said to the man, you can make a choice. You can give up your belongings and follow me. But if you choose your belongings, then... That's your choice. But he didn't grab him, shake him upside down so he could pour all of his change out on the ground and then say, and here's a little for you, and here's a little for you, and here's a little for you. I know how difficult it is to make ends meet. Most people out there do. Mike Crapo has been serving in the U.S. Senate quite comfortably now for about, what, 18 years? And again, I really think the world of the man, but you know what? You don't have the hardship. I have spent the last couple of months on my days off driving around Idaho. Last weekend, I was out to Gooding and Wendell and in various communities. The week before that, I guess I was out in Atomic City and in Arco, and Arco's doing okay. But I, I've been through a lot of places, and I was in Blackfoot, and I have done a lot of the traveling around. And let me tell you, the poverty in this state is amazing. You drive down the streets. I was in Paul a couple of weeks ago. You drive down the streets of these communities and you wonder how people are going to make it if we have just another mild recession. Why do we have them taking care of the rest of the world? And why are we bringing the rest of the world here and saying, oh, but you've got to do this because it's the right thing to do? You know what? They're wondering how they're going to feed their kids. How they're even they, 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 college? That's not even on the on the horizon. They're wondering how they're going to ma manage to patch the roof so it doesn't leak on them this winter, and yet they're being told you got to give everything away you have. Excuse me, that's my money. I'd like to be able to keep it and make those decisions on my own. 
We have a caller with us at 953. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Good morning, Bill. Well, Margaret Thatcher uh, said it very well. She said the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. And, you know, that is so true. This all this redistributing wealth, I mean, obviously they're printing more money because we have so much more debt. We're up to what nineteen point four trillion and rising every day, and uh, but it's about destroying this country to make us a third world nation so we can comfortably merge with the rest of the third world nations into the the utopian slave camp called the United Nations. Promoted by Hillary Clinton, we should point out. Well, absolutely. The United Nations, since its inception, uh, by the way, there's a bill, H.R. 1205, to get us out of the United Nations. And ever since its inception in 1945, it has been controlled by communists and socialists. We get Common Core. We get the refugee program. You name the program, uh, Agenda 21, the global warming hoax, all of that's coming right out of the U.N., and it's time to get out of there and, of course, Hillary and Obama support these things full-time, and they're just taking our money, redistributing it. Just the climate thing alone, Bill, I mean, we're going to pay all these developing nations that are now pumping uh, more pollutants in the air, and a lot of that's coming right across the Pacific Ocean, right back into our backyard. Yeah, and uh, and, and and our backyard, and we paid for it. I thank you so much for the uh, for the telephone call. I just, and I'm not hopeful, I, you know, that that we're going to get the result we want in November. And if the Wicked Witch of the West ends up uh, winning the White House, friends, all bets are off. I, I don't know how we can continue. I, I, I And, you know, you hate to say it, but it's going to be an economic calamity of some massive, massive shape that will end up turning things around because people really only react when there's a serious crisis. But my gosh, I don't want to see that because I've been, I was homeless for a number of months way back in 2006. I had had a job working at a talk radio station and in fact, the Wicked Witch of the West put some pressure on my ownership group to get rid of me. I think I've shared that story before. They did. And I thought I had a job lined up in Springfield, Missouri, so I was living in an apartment at the time. I closed up my apartment, gave my dog away, made the arrangements to leave. And then a friend of mine, I said, yeah, stay in my house for a few days until you go. And then the guy who had offered me the job got fired. <laughs> and along with that went my job. So I ended up having to find another job, underemployed, scraping by, trying to work as many hours as I could at $11 an hour so I could still feed a daughter, pay for my gasoline, uh, help my buddy out who was helping me out, do all of those things. And I had to do that for nearly a year. And I'll tell you what, nobody, and at the time I was in my mid-40s, nobody should have to live like that in the good old USA. And unfortunately, there was very little opportunity for someone my age and in this economy. It's not like it was when my, my dad told me this story when he got out of the Army. And he came back to western New York State, and he went to uh, what was then called Harrison Radiator, where he had worked beforehand, said, I'd like my job back. And they said, when can you start? And it was about 9 o'clock in the morning. He said, I'll be here for the night shift just before 3. They said, okay, we'll see you then. So he had some time to kill, so he drove over to the Chevy plant in Tonawanda, New York. And he walked in. He said, I'd like a job. Oh, well, uh, what, what shift would you like? Days. When can you start? Tomorrow morning. And so he had two jobs immediately. It's not like that any longer. And they keep dumping these people here telling us it's going to be better for us. No, it's only better for the people who are trying to, 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 to break us by reducing us into, as I say, penury, poverty, and, and to pit us against all of these people in competition for those low wages. We are, we are fiddling with something here that is very, very dangerous to the fabric that we have known of this country. And we better get our head on straight, and we better tell the people who are elected to represent us, we don't have time any longer, and we're no longer going to put up with it. 10 o'clock news is next. God willing, if the creek don't rise, they'll allow me to come back and do this all over again tomorrow morning between 8 and 10 o'clock. Rush Limbaugh is next, following the news at 10 o'clock. 
Of course, Sean Hannity today following news at 1 o'clock. Glenn Beck after 4 o'clock news. Dave Ramsey tonight at 7 o'clock.